Hey folks, Quilly Keen here, and welcome to another episode of our tutorial Let's Play of Sid Meier's Civilization V. Um, so we started building our great library, we've got our settler out, we're going to start building our first city, so let's go ahead and just skip a few turns. Ah, oh, we've reached our first golden age. So what is that? First of all, if you have excess happiness, and we do, we're positive 11, okay? Every turn, that gets added towards a golden age, and when you reach a certain number, a golden age will start. And while that's going on... Every tile in your empire that produces at least one gold produces an extra one. Furthermore, your cities get 20% bonus production, and we get 20% more culture. It's really quite good to be in a golden age. It's just something that will sort of happen on its own if you're happy. There's also a few wonders, like a wonder that if you build it, it will, I think it's Taj Mahal, will instantly start a uh, golden age. Taj Mahal. Yep, as soon as you build the Taj Mahal, you'll enter a golden age. And there's a few other little things like that. Um... But uh, yeah, it's good to be in one. So we're gonna keep uh, we're gonna keep seeing what we're being prompted. Uh, our archer wants to move. I'm actually just gonna hit the space bar, which is the same as hitting this button, and tell it to do nothing. I just want to keep spotting here while we keep moving our um, our settler around. This archer, meanwhile, can make sure there's no more barbarians in your Leventa. In fact, there's a camp here. I don't suppose you have a mission for me to clear that. You don't. That's bizarre. Hopefully, Leventa will get a mission, a quest to clear out this camp, because if we clear it out while there's a quest, we'll get 50 influence with them, which is awesome. We're going to go and try to finish that quarry that we uh, interrupted earlier, and we're going to keep trying to hammer through some of these turns. In fact, I think after this video, ideally we'll hopefully finish the Great Library. I think what we'll do is fast forward. Uh, I'll, put a, I'll put a cut, and then I'll play until a little bit later in the game, and then we can deal with some of the late game topics. Uh, I'm going to move up here with this archer, just to Give a little more cover, especially since this thing is still healing. Ooh, a brute spawned. So let's take one step back and shoot him. It's not really going to help us because he's still going to be able to reach us and hit. But I'll feel better if there's a little bit more distance between us. Just psychologically. The important thing is that we shot him first, so he's weakened. Oh, apparently on chieftain level, they're not attacking us? That seems weird. Again, I'm used to playing at higher difficulty where the Barbarians behave a little bit differently, but let's keep taking some free shots. Again, that's free experience points for our units. Uh, not to mention, if we kill it, we'll get some culture. So I'm going to go ahead and settle in this place. I think it's fine. It's not necessarily the greatest. It's also a little food light. Um, because planes give one food, one hammer, as opposed to grasslands, which give two food. We're going to need a lot of farms going on over here, which means we're really going to need an extra worker very, very quickly. We'll finish that quarry. We'll probably finish these horses, and then uh, we'll try to improve this area over here. So I'm going to go ahead and found York, just to be able to take advantage of Mount Kalash. I probably could have built it a little further south, and maybe I should have. Maybe I should have built on this hill. I wouldn't have gotten marble, though. And luxury resources, normally when you settle... Your goal is to try to claim new luxury resources because happiness is your biggest limiter to having a big empire. And so here with our placement of York, we get copper, which is a happiness resource, and we'll eventually get marble as well. The wheat is just good because it's more food. Food is great. Horses are good because it's more production, which is good. But also uh, this horse tile, you can see it, produ it provides four horses. We, right now we have zero horses. To build units like knights, for example, you need access to horses. So you get a variety of different things. Some things are just there for food, some things are there for happiness, and some things are there, these are called strategic resources that are used for uh, military units. All right, with York being founded, I feel very comfortable moving this archer away. In fact, I'm going to move him way down here to check out this area once again. Bit of a long trip, but that's going to be fine. What are we going to build first in York? Um... I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to start with a granary. Normally, I'd, I'd probably start with a shrine or maybe even a library, but here I'm going to start with a granary because A, it's a little food poor, and B, it will gain wheat at some point. Um, and the granary, as you remember, gives plus one food on wheat tiles. We may actually buy that tile. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to buy a worker first, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, this archer will finish that fool off over here. Again, they moved into the marsh. So they take even more damage. Experience points, culture, great stuff. Next turn. We're actually going to get our next uh, policy next turn, which is going to be really good. You can see our happiness did go down because we settled an extra city. The mostest literate people. So we're in second place overall. We have eight technologies. Someone has nine, though. Someone we haven't met. Clearly someone on the other continent. We do get to choose an extra policy. I'm going to go ahead for... Um, you know what? I'm going to grab aristocracy right now. So let's see what that would mean. So right now there's 11 turns left 
for the Great Library in London. We've grown to size 5, which helped a lot. If I grab Aristocracy, which gives us a 15% production bonus when building Wonders, it shaved the turn off the Wonder, which is great. We might still get this. It's going to be tough, but we can. Another way you can speed up uh, Wonders is if you chop Forest and down. Um, it will give you a boost of production, which is pretty handy. This Archer got its first promotion. We're going to go ahead and give it Barrage. We'll then move one tile over here, which will give us vision of the Barbarian Brute over here, and we're going to start shooting him. And we're hoping to get a mission from La Venta to destroy that camp, but we still don't have it. They want us to demand tribute from Buenos Aires. We're not going to do that. And uh, they also want culture, which I think we could probably lead. I think we're getting a good amount of it. All right, our warrior over here is now fully healed. So what are we going to do with him? Well, probably send him to do some scouting. I'm going to send him way, way down here. And try to clear up that spot just to see what we can see. I'm going to go ahead and get the horses hooked up to give London a little bit more production. And then I'm probably going to move to York with that worker. Meanwhile, I'm going to step forward one more tile and then shoot. Remember, you need to have at least one movement left to attack. Or you need to have at least some movement left to attack. But I was able to do that by moving one and then shooting. Always nice to take advantage of that. Ooh, there's a Brazilian trade caravan so to to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. All right, we finished the calendar, which in addition to a few, uh, the wonder, Stonehenge, and the building stoneworks, which we will definitely build in London, it allows us to build plantations, for example, on the silk. Need another technology? Uh, we still... Uh, well, you know what? We're going to want sailing finally to start hooking up the pearls relatively soon. But I would also like bronze working. London is probably going to build a caravan next to do a trade route up to Brussels since they want one, if I recall. So we're actually going to sneak in bronze working mostly to reveal iron. Again, do not take the technologies in researching this game as gospel. I'm mostly just clicking on things, but I'm trying to explain the reason behind each one as I go. We're clearing out another camp over here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take it for the 40 gold, even though that won't complete a quest. It's still nice to get the money. In fact, how much money do we need to purchase a worker? 310. It'd be really nice to be able to just buy that and speed things along. In fact, in hindsight, maybe I should have done that instead of um, bought an archer, instead of buying an archer, but the archer's doing work. He's not being too bad. Speaking of archer, here's our scout archer that's super fast moving. Wow, what a great spot for a uh, late-game city. Well, not late-game city, just so far away. In fact, I suspect Byzantium will probably claim that first, which makes me a bit sad because it is so good. Let's go and take the uh, kill on this brute over here. It might impress Laventa, but also, because we have the honor opener, we'll get some extra culture from that, which is quite nice. And... We got a brute over there. Let's go ahead and take a shot at him while we've got the opportunity. And uh, this archer here, I think I'm probably going to keep him relatively close to my homeland. Um, just to be able to defend in case any other barbarians show up. I'm going to put him maybe on this forest here. And if I see a barbarian near my cities and threatening my workers, then I will be able to react with that archer. It seems like a pretty good idea. So someone has finally founded another pantheon. They chose the Desert Folklore Belief. That was Brazil that chose that. And you know what? Brazil does actually have quite a bit of desert tiles around here, so it'll get a benefit from that. It may even Brazil might decide to colonize or settle somewhere on the coast over here, so it'll be even more advantageous. Go ahead and shoot that barbarian. Probably kill it. There we go. A little bit more culture. Such a nice little thing to get. It's, um, you really do need to kill a lot of barbarians to make it worthwhile. Because while the early policies are really inexpensive, the costs do go up a lot. So by picking this honor opener, it can really delay a lot of the other policies. But so far, so good. I'm actually just going to backtrack here and get up on this hill just to see a little bit further before I continue down to the south. I suspect it'll probably end somewhere over here. That's an interesting looking continent. Here Hector enters. So we've researched bronze working, which enables us to build spearmen, build the barracks building, build the Statue of Zeus World Wonder, will reveal iron, and lets us chop down jungle. And we get to choose some more research. I will definitely grab some sailing at this point, because we need sailing. I mean, we're English, for crying out loud. Meanwhile, uh, this worker, I'm going to send up... Um, I would like to get the, the weed up soon enough, but... 
I might just start with a farm right over here. I'm really concerned about York not having enough food. It's really food poor. Uh, this warrior can keep scouting down the coast. And the archer can move down to here. Another city-state we're about to meet. Say, okay, you're going to pick up the wheat on your own in seven turns. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and build a farm right on the river to get the food going a little bit sooner. And prioritize that. Rather than hook up the horses, which would give us more production, which isn't bad. But I'm really concerned about the growth. And we completed the Great Library. We beat everyone else, despite taking a pretty ridiculous risk. So we're going to get a free technology and a free library and all kinds of good stuff. So we're prompted to choose our free technology. So we've got a list of technologies we can choose from. And that's just basically like the list that we've sort of unlocked. These are all technologies we could be researching. You'll notice sailing is in list, but we're one turn away from getting it. So it'd be stupid to take that. I tend to pick the technology that is worth the most. So I wouldn't take the wheel, which is worth 52 science. Instead, I would pick either philosophy drama or poetry or ironworking, which are all worth 183. In this case, I'm going to take philosophy. And the reason is philosophy gives you a very, very, very important um, national wonder. So there are world wonders where you can only one person can build one in the entire game. And there are national wonders, which um, everyone can build one, only one. So as England, I can build a national college. Brazil can build a national college, and so on and so forth. And the reason it's so important is it gives you a 50% science boost in the city where it is, as well as just flat plus three science. It is a building you want to get up and running relatively early, usually in your capital, because your capital will be the biggest and will be producing the most science. So the 50% science boost will be the most valuable there. Note you have to have a library in all your cities before you can build your national college. I'm going to take philosophy because it's a more expensive one and definitely in technology I need to get relatively early. But I can't there build the national college yet the because we don't have a library in Zeus York. So, and by grabbing philosophy, we've entered the classical era, which is, you know, fancy. It does a few things on its own, but not really much to worry about. We've met Mogadishu down here. It is a maritime city-state, which means if we befriend it, it'll give us food in our capital, which is quite nice. It's got access to silk and iron, so if we get allied, we'll get both of those things. And that's not bad. I'm going to go ahead and upset them a little bit by walking through their borders. They'll get over it pretty soon. We're going to go ahead and start a farm here by York. And I'm going to have this archer. I'm going to hit the, um, the alert button. So he'll fortify, but if he sees an enemy, he'll automatically wake up. We've got a barbarian galley off the coast here but that's not really going to concern us. But you do have to worry about your early ships. They can get destroyed by some barbarians. In London, I'm going to put out the caravan. There's still someone who wants a trade route. Yeah, Brussels wants a trade route. So we'll get a caravan going. One, it'll complete that quest with Brussels, which will make them allied, which is nice. And two, trade routes give us money, and money is really good. Next turn. Like we're not that far away from being able to buy a second worker, which I'll definitely want to do. He who commands the Finish sailing, we can build command. a workboat after we complete our caravan. And a workboat will allow us to work uh, to improve those pearls off our coast. Workboats are kind of like workers, but they're consumed when you improve terrain, whereas workers just keep on going. Um, so what technology do we want next? An excellent question. Out of the ones that are available... Um, the wheel is the quickest to research. You know, you can sort of almost do it as a throwaway. Let's us build chariot archers with horses, and they're better than regular uh, archers. Um, as England, you wouldn't really care about these as much. What you'd be more interested in is, because you can upgrade units, if we develop the technology called construction, which gives us access to composite bowmen, they're more powerful than regular archers. Regular archers have a range strength of 7. These have a range strength of 11 quite a bit more, like 50% better. Um, and uh, you can upgrade your archers to bowmen. But most importantly, again, as England, when you reach machinery, normally you get crossbowmen. But as England, we would get longbowmen instead, which are much, much better because, well, they have plus one attack range. I know it says range two of there, but they'll actually have a trait on them that says plus one range. So they actually have a range of three, which is unbelievably good and so much more powerful than everything else at that tier. Um, so that is going to be a really, really nice thing to get. So as a result of that, 
we're not really going to want chariot archers. If we're going to build ranged units, we're going to want to build regular archers so that we can keep upgrading them to composite bowmen and then finally to long bowmen because they're going to be stupendously good. So we don't have to worry about that too much. So these are things to keep in mind as you play different civilizations. Um, and with that, actually getting construction is often very nice. You do need the wheel for that first, as you can see. So, I mean, we'll, we'll unlock chariot archers, but we may not build them. Um, the advantage that chariot archers have over archers is, A, they're a little bit stronger. So, 7 here versus 10 here. But more importantly, they also have a movement of 4. These are very fast units. But, so construction gives us the ability to build composite bowmen, which are great. And also the ability to build coliseums, which gives you more happiness, which on high difficulty is even more important. And also the ability to build a terracotta army world wonder, which is interesting, but not critical. Also lumber mills, which are great improvements you can build on top of uh, forests. The other thing that wouldn't be terrible is optics. Optics allows you to build a lighthouse, and a lighthouse gives you bonus food from coast and ocean tiles, and plus one production from sea resources. Remember those three pearls? So that each one of those pearls would get plus one production, which would be great. It's also especially good if it's fish, because not only do they get the plus one production, but they also get plus one food on top of what they normally get. Lighthouse, also an exquisitely strong pick. In fact, I think we're going to start with optics, and then I'm going to hold shift and queue up construction, and we're going to go in that order there. Let's uh, try to sneak out of Mogadishu's territory. See the coast over here. And pop down that way. We have 310 gold yet? No, we don't. In fact, our gold amounts have gone down ever so slightly, probably because of some extra buildings. Still hoping to build an extra worker. I feel like our start's actually quite slow. I handle it relatively poorly if I was trying hard. But we're still doing much, much better than our AI opponents at this difficulty. Oh, here's something interesting. Rio de Janeiro has actually built a settler. They're getting ready to put down their first, well, their second city. If we can somehow, if this settler is off on its own somewhere, we could declare war on Rio de Janeiro and capture the settler. It would turn into a worker for us, but it would deal a crippling blow to our opponents and also help us quite a bit. Let's keep our, uh, our worker around here. We're going to keep him on the hill to give us vision. We're going to try to figure out where this guy might go. He comes south, we may declare war and steal it. We'll see how it goes. How much time do I have left in this video? Oh, enough. Nope, uh, I, th ooh, I, th I think the war the settler went north, actually. And I think the archer went east. Uh, we can bring our own archer back home. I'm gonna upset Mogadishu a little bit, but it's not too bad. Let me try to follow around north here, see if we can't catch it. It's unlikely, but we can try. We can adopt another policy. At this point, I would like to um, probably pick up Monarchy. Monarchy is good. It gives us extra, uh, I was going to say extra happiness. It's not quite that. It just gives us less unhappiness. The number you see here is the difference between happiness and unhappiness. You can see we have 15 happiness and 8 unhappiness, which is what leaves us at 7. So if we would lower unhappiness, it would help us get to another golden age and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't see any reason. Oh, we could go into piety. We are talking about maybe doing the religious game. The piety opener is not bad. It makes shrines and temples half price. Um, we know we want to finish tradition, though, so we may as well go ahead and grab monarchy. It's very, very good. You can see we're at nine happiness. It's very, very handy. Mogadishu wants investors. So you can always spend money on city-states to increase your influence. Oh, ho, 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 this is so tempting. Um, but Mogadishu is saying that they're going to give even more influence than usual. Oh, this is annoying. I can't leave Mogadishu's territory because of the Brazilian spearmen. So we're going to upset them slightly more. No? How come they're not mad? Ah, oh, because they've got a quest to defeat barbarian units in their territory. So while they've got that quest going on, we can safely enter their territory because they're assuming that we're there to destroy the barbarians um let me move the archer down i actually should have done that a little bit sooner most likely this settler is going to drop a city maybe here or maybe here or here so we probably can't catch it unfortunately but let's keep our eyes open meanwhile we have uh, finished a quest with la venta um it's probably this pop up here yeah because of the influence we we generated a lot of culture so we got 40 influence boosts with them so we're actually friends with la venta right now andy Mm, I think this archer, I think our exploration days are basically over now, so I'm just going to bring it home. Ah, you can see that uh, Byzantium, they've expanded here. I think we'll bring it home. I don't think there's there's too much space to do any sort of early war, uh, but other than that, 
Uh, we could we could have it sort of just spot out in the wilderness, or I could put it up on this hill by York. Or one of the things is once I get the oligarchy social policy in tradition, units in cities no longer cost me maintenance. So the idea might just be to put my units back into some cities and have them uh, be free. All right, so we've built a farm there, so we'll get a little bit of extra food, and we've got enough culture to pick up wheat. I'm going to go ahead and build a farm on the wheat tile as early as possible. Normally, you can't... Um, normally, there's not as much benefit from building farms where you don't have fresh water. You want to build them along rivers and lakes as much as possible. Um, but obviously, we're going to build a farm on this wheat because we get a benefit from that. Let's see if we can't follow this settler over here. We may be able to do something about it yet. It feels unlikely. Because it moves at the same rate as we do. So unless we can sandwich it in. We discovered optics, which allows us to build that lighthouse, which would be very, very, very good. Really should have probably prioritized the coastal stuff. Oh, we finished our first caravan. So I do want to show off trade routes. So you can see at the top of the screen over here how many trade routes I can have. Because of my technology, I can actually have two trade routes. I've built one trade unit, so I could also build a second one. And I can deploy it here. Now, this is not a unit I can move. I can't move the caravan. But what I can do is hit this button to establish a trade route. And once I do that, I can see my cities. I can see other civilizations' cities that I can reach. Now, unfortunately, Rio de Janeiro is too far away right now to run a trade route there. Later on, I'll get increased range. But for now, I can't run a trade route to here. So I can run one to a Brussels, Buenos Aires, or La Venta. Each one of them... This will give me two gold, but give them one gold. I could also send a trade route to York, which would give it four food per turn, which is pretty good. Um, but we know that we have a mission from Brussels to complete a land or sea trade route to their city. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to send a trade route to Brussels. It's only two gold per turn, which isn't much, but I love the influence boost. Brussels almost also wants a great profit, which actually we're going to get relatively soon. So that'll work out pretty good. Uh, York over here. Now, because this hill, because this, this world wonder is a mountain, the automatic tile acquisition is very unlikely to pick that up. It'll be very, very slow before it does that. We'll most likely have to buy this tile. Um, which I think, yeah, is this 80? It's like hovering kind of oddly, but it would cost the 80 gold to buy this. However, I'm not going to do that quite yet because I actually just want to get another worker. Uh, in London here, I will purchase a worker to get one a little bit faster. I want to improve more tiles. And we have to, I guess, choose production in London. So I'm going to go right ahead into building a lighthouse. It's going to be a really, really good perk because right now, these tiles produce one food, two gold. With a lighthouse, they will produce... A second food because they're an ocean tile and a hammer because the lighthouse does that which is going to be really really good so I'm gonna build the lighthouse first and then I'll probably build some work boats to improve those to make them even better meanwhile this archer wants orders so I'm gonna go ahead and oh that's a marsh that's why it's so slow there's no way we're gonna catch this settler we're gonna to try to chase it a little bit more anyway there we go there's Sao Paulo and we automatically got booted out of its borders still Sao Paulo is close enough to attack. Unfortunately, it was built in a really stupid location. The AI loves to do this, where it builds sort of one tile away from the sea. Sea tiles are not very strong, unless they're improved by things with lighthouse, like lighthouses. Sao Paulo can't build a lighthouse because it's not on the coast. So, there's a good chance if we took Sao Paulo, we'd probably just destroy it, instead of keeping it, and then put a city in the right place. But we're not going to do that quite yet. I'm just going to go ahead and pull back with my, uh, my warrior. I'm going to put it in London. This archer, I'm just going to have it um, be on alert mode. So, actually, I'll put it on the hill. Get slightly better vision. Because I want to see if any units are moving around over here. This worker over here is going to go and improve the silk. York is just about to finish its granary. Theodora is upset at becoming friendly with Brussels. Theodora wanted to become allied with them, but I've beaten her to it. So this is making her a little bit upset. Um, I don't think either one of these options actually does anything to our relationship. If you mouse over here, we can see the sort of traits we've got. We've been friends, and we've, we're friends with the same leader, so we're very, very friendly right now. I say, I'm going to apologize, you know, sorry, this has caused the difference. And Theodora has built the Temple of Artemis, a very, very good wonder. Now, you might be a bit sad, if it's a good wonder, that we didn't get to build it. Well, here's the neat thing that we can do. 
if we were to just go and conquer Constantinople, then we would have that wonder. It's not bad to let the AI build the wonder and then just steal them. Um, probably get a library going sooner rather than later. Uh, I do want to build the National College, which you could do. You need a library in every city before you can build it. So there's two paths you can take with that. Sometimes what you do is you stay with two cities, build the library here, and then build the National College. Often I like to build a third city, and in that third city I just buy the library. Um, and then I use that to build the National College at that point, which is probably what we're going to do. So, oh yeah, this guy, I'm just going to hit A to put him on alert mode. And some turns. I'm going to work on my infrastructure in London. We are we are building very, very slowly. That that wonder really slowed us down. On the other hand, our science output is going to be phenomenal, so that's not Winston entirely bad. You. We've completed the wheel, which lets us build roads. Oh, my archer just woke up because he could actually see the galley. I'm going to go ahead and shoot the galley. We might get some experience points for it. And if we ever manage to kill it, we'll get some uh, bonus culture. I'm going to build this plantation here. Note that building this plantation will remove the forest which means you do need the mining technology before you can do that, but it'll also produce some hammers. Ah, Sao Paulo killed um, the galley, so we're not going to get the culture boost, which is unfortunate. Buenos Aires is in uh, awe of us because they wanted uh, someone to produce culture, and we did that. We're producing a lot of culture right now. Like, 18 is actually really good at this stage. Now, part of the reason for that is we're friends with cultural city-states, so it's sort of like self-reinforcement. Brussels is giving us um, culture, uh, Buenos Aires is now giving us culture as well. Like, half our culture is from city-states. So we're, we're doubling our, our cultural output because we've managed to make friends over here, which is really, really nice. Uh, I'm just going to park this warrior in London. Again, by doing that, it'll actually improve the city strength um, and save us some money. Uh, mostly due to oligarchy, which actually I guess we don't have yet, but we will have it really soon. It's one of those social policies. I guess we got to put a cut in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep playing this. I'm going to try to settle a third city. I suspect we may build a city over here. There's some great stuff over here. We get a little bit of iron to the south, a little bit of iron to the north, which allows us to build swordman unit. Uh, things are a little too crowded to the south over here, with Sao Paulo being over there. I think technically we could cram in a city there. We could also cram one in sort of to the north here, but that wouldn't be very good. Yeah, I'm going to try to get a settler out to the west of the lake. Try to expand out of that, grab some iron, build some military units, and uh, maybe we'll come back when uh, when I prepare to declare war on someone. Maybe to burn down Sao Paulo, or maybe we'll try to see if we can't conquer Constantinople, since we know it's got a wonder in there, and that would be pretty nice. Until then, see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.